My name is Oliver Queen. For five years, I was stranded on an island with only one goal. Survive. Oliver Queen is alive. Now I will fulfill my father's dying wish to use the list of names he left me and bring down those who are poisoning my city. To do this, I must become someone else. I must become something else. Hello and welcome to the Arafans UK episode review podcast. This one will be focusing around episode 10, which was called Blast Radius. I'm Bradley and I'm joined as usual by Corey. Hello, Corey. Hi, guys. So it's been a long time since uh, Three Ghosts. Um, obviously, we've had the mid-season review in the middle, but watch, new episode-wise, it's uh, been quite a while. Middle of February. It's not very good uh, scheduling from Sky, but we'll, we'll get over it. We're here now. Okay, so just before we start talking about Blast Radius, um, there's a small matter of some news to talk about. Um, it's not that big, to be honest. Uh, we get little casting things, uh, people appearing on the show in upcoming episodes. This is nowhere near as big as that, is it? No, not even close, really. I mean, it's only a, a season three renewal. It, it's nothing major. Nope, nope, nope. Pretty, pretty mini as they go. Yes. Um, so... It's obviously a brilliant news in the Arrow world. Um, usually, uh, the main networks over in America renew their kind of obvious um, shows, ones that are clearly going to be renewed because of great ratings, usually in mid-March. Uh, the CW, last season, uh, and this season, and quite a few seasons before, have actually done it about now. Uh, oh. We got an Arrow season one, season two renewal, sorry. Uh, about this time last year. Um, so it's not out of the normal to get a renewal this early. Um, it's great news, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think they've got a good story going for them. Um, and the most frustrating thing would be if, you know, we get f- f- three or so seasons in. Well, obviously we've got season three now, so say if it got cancelled at the end of this season and we didn't get to find out what happened, I mean... You know, be pretty infuriating. You want to see him have a chance to complete it, and they definitely deserve a chance to see this story the whole way through. And yeah, it's only good things for our TV screens, and probably slightly bad news for you is it means you'll have to put up with my podcast for another year or so. Oh, yay. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, yeah, uh, that's actually the thing I was going to mention. It uh, keeps us going for another year or so at least. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Which is, uh, which is all good. I mean, I'd hate for it to get to May and uh, to just us to end, really. Yeah, no, I'd, 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 I'd leave the website up, but we don't post anything, we don't podcast or anything, it's just... It would be incredibly sad. Yes, it would, it would. Um, but yeah, um, actually on that, uh, saying about it might get cancelled or whatever, actually I think a fourth season renewal is basically certain now. All right. Because, because over in America, what they do is they have a thing called syndication, yeah. And generally, at 88 episodes, when a show reaches 88 episodes, what it means is that other channels, so like over here where you've got, so Sky One and Air Arrow. Yeah. Once it reaches syndication, then it could, then, um, say, uh, Sci-Fi. Yeah. Could start showing it or something, or, um, what other channels are there? I don't know really. Uh, what, like, other channels can start showing it. Yeah. Other than Sky One and Sky Two. Okay, yeah. Um, and that's basically what happens over in America. It gets syndication. This could happen before 88 episodes, but once it reaches 88 episodes, 88 episodes, then that's what happens. Yeah, it's not um, bad, and it obviously means that the CW and all the network that is the particular show that has syndication gets a lot more money. And well, that, they're going to be fairly happy with that, you'd imagine. Yes, and considering it's not one of those shows that's sort of like struggling for ratings, getting good ratings here and there, this is one of its top rated shows. Yeah. It's going to get a fourth season. And, you know, that's only more good news for us. Yes. I hope, I think I've pretty much got a correct prediction in the bag there, except we've got to wait a year to see if I'm right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that is depressing. <laughs> oh well. I'm sure, I'm sure I'll have uh, better predictions down the line that we can see. If I'm right, uh, much quicker than that. Yep, yep, I'm sure. Um, so, just to start off with, Corey, what were your thoughts on the episode? Um, well, I thought it was a good introduction back into the Arrow world. Um, in terms of free ghosts, it picked up with 
a lot of that. We had Felicity still in Central City um, looking after Barry. You know, that wasn't just dropped completely, um, which I thought was a nice touch. Um, I thought perhaps in terms of a bad guy, is a little tame to an extent. Um, I sort of, I mean, I know he's blown stuff up, but I sort of didn't really feel he was that much of a threat. Like, compared to Free Ghosts, where we had Cyrus Gold, Blood, and all that, that just felt sort of more dangerous, if that kind of makes sense. Yeah. I mean, I think it wasn't so much like the danger, because he was obviously dangerous, because he was blowing people up. But it was more kind of the ease with which he could be stopped. Yeah. I think it's sort of the how you... Yeah, I think that's what I was trying to say. I mean, if you compare it to episode 10 last season, sort of, I almost felt to an extent they were a little bit similar in terms of how they were quite easy to stop. I mean, obviously, um, episode 10 last year, um, what was his name? I guess he was Firefly in the um, comics, so I'll just go with that. Yeah. But, um, you know, he just basically gave up and walked into fire. I mean, in this one, Oliver just had to snap an arrow at his wire um, so it's quite sort of straightforward but nonetheless it was a good introduction back into it and obviously you can't have a really high class top really difficult to stop villain week after week otherwise that would get repetitive as well so yeah I mean uh, it was it was a good episode it wasn't anything spectacular um, I mean, it, considering obviously the quality of three ghosts it was a long way down yeah, um, yeah. but it, it wasn't much. It wasn't any worse than, you know, an average episode. It was. It wasn't a pretty average episode, um, which on some levels is good, but others kind of after three goes, it's a bit disappointing that they couldn't have something much uh, better than that. Yeah, yeah, I'd, I'd agree with that. Mm. Uh, like you said about the shrapnel, I think it's kind of been a common theme uh, recently that they like, sort of have these villains but don't introduce anything about them I mean it was a pretty tame attempt at sort of introducing backstory by having him in the shop yeah yeah uh, but it, it's I think like there's not really anything you can connect to the villain it's just sort of three four scenes where he's just killing people it's just I don't know I, I think we've talked about it before sort of sometimes they just sort of there to be the villain and they are sort of a little bit basic it's sort of like um you know you're just showing them and basically the idea is they're evil you're not supposed to like them blah 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 um but sometimes it can make them a little dull in the sense that you know there's no development they're just there to be the danger or whatever and um you know Sort of, if you look at the more well-rounded villains we've got, you'd say Slade. Probably we're finding out about him. Blood, um, Malcolm Merlin last season. You know, they're definitely the more interesting villains we've had, and you can sort of see the difference when you get a villain like Shrapnel. But obviously, they have the majority of a season to develop. So you know. But I think also, I mean, not so much even with the development. You can look at someone like um, Cyrus Vance last season. Yeah. He wasn't. He was developed a little bit more so than Shrapnel, um, but he was sort of a good villain. He was. Uh, you could sort of see him as a, a main kind of big bad guy. Yeah. I, I, he. He seemed like a mastermind. Um, but like stuff like even the mayor and um, Shrapnel and don't know who else we've had this year. Um, yeah, they, they've all sort of seen just, like, random people who just could get in the way. They're not really any sort of big villain. Yeah, I, I know what you mean. I mean, I think, for example, with Shrapnel, we obviously, he, um, he was blowing things up, and we kind of just told, you know, he had that convenient bit where he was talking to himself and kind of just explained to us his whole motive. Um, I think that was the first time we saw him, but... Like, uh, you sort of, when as Vanch, what he was doing kind of made sense. You know, he's tr- there was a gap. Um, I think it was the triad had gone, Burton Ellie had gone, and sort of he was seeing it as his chance to sort of take over. Um, with um, Shrapnel, 
you know, he was trying to sort of had an anti-political agenda or something, and just we didn't really know why. It was sort of just, I'm here, this is what I'm doing, I'm blowing things up, that's all you need to know. And sort of, I guess, I can't really sort of phrase it, but sometimes where, you know, all villains have motives, but when you don't really get the explanation of them, they sort of just, they feel a bit meaningless, I guess. Yep, I'd agree with that. I mean, you say we saw him in the pan um, with his little speech and whatever else. That was quite evil. I like that. Yeah. But not as evil as Slade, but, you know. Um, but there wasn't any explanation as to why he was doing any of it. No, I know. It's just sort of that little speech and then um, Diggle seeing the manifesto thing that he published on the internet of like 300 pages. And yet we still didn't know why he was doing it. Yeah, yeah, sort of if... If perhaps you'd given him just a little bit of backstory why he's doing this, then perhaps he could have been a better villain for us. I mean, I think he he's based on someone in the comics, so if we do a little bit of digging on that, we might be able to find out. But sort of in terms of the episode, you just didn't really get that. And Yeah, yeah. I mean, if there is a lot of um, sort of comic background to him, I don't know, I haven't looked him up actually, uh, which is surprising. Um, but if there is, um, then I'm surprised that they didn't actually sort of bring any of it in and just sort of expect comic people, uh, comic fans to know that rather than kind of addressing it to the larger fan base who don't read the comics like us. I mean, that is what they have done so far. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, um, I think Count Vertigo, he was obviously in the comics um, and we kind of definitely got him a little more. Um and the doll maker to an extent too but with shrapnel we just didn't get that and sort of um i think we were talking about how this show's been good at sort of being accessible to um both comic book fans and like new fans um but sort of with shrapnel it just it didn't really do that i mean it's only a minor qualm really because on the whole it's a hell of a show but yeah yeah i mean i've just kind of looked him up uh just a little bit about what he did in Arrow. Um, doesn't really say... Well, I didn't, I didn't miss anything, basically. It doesn't say that uh, there was something about it. But apparently there's very little about his past and identities known. Um, so, I mean... I, uh, by looking at this, there isn't very much about him in the comics either. No, no. Um, so maybe he's meant to be this sort of ambiguous character. You don't really know what he, why he's doing what he's doing. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, it, it would have been nice, is all I'm saying. Yeah, I, I'd agree with you on that. It would have um, been nice to learn a bit more about him. I mean, it's only based on the comics, so they could have just, you know, invented their own little backstory too. But still, it's only a minor thing. But it, it would have added to the episode, I think, without a doubt. Hmm. I like the uh, little laser thing that he left for Oliver. Yeah, that was cool. I wasn't kind of... At the first Rick watch, I wasn't quite sure what Oliver was doing with his bow to try and stop the bomb from going off. Yeah. And then eventually I realised he was trying to slide it in front of the, um, the curve. Yeah. <laughs> I, I thought he was trying to move it more further up his arrow, and I thought, what's the point of that? Once you fire the arrow, it's just going to be out of the laser anyway. <laughs> but yeah. Anyway. Um... I think that's all for the villain. Um, I was a bit disappointed we didn't see um, Blood's alter ego. Yeah. I mean... That would have been nice. Sort of, with Oliver looking for him as well, um, the man in the skull mask, um, and Laurel tracking him down and all that, it, it you know, it would have been a nice touch to have him in there, but I suppose we can't have it every week. <laughs> no. I mean, I'll come to the Laurel thing in a minute, but yeah, that was a good little opening scene that... It kind of just, con- it was a continuation, wasn't it, of Three Ghosts, where we're five weeks on, uh, which was really good from the, the writers to kind of have that Christmas gap yeah. of the same length. Um, I think they did that last year as well. <clears throat> um, yeah, yeah. But having that opening scene where he's sort of going after these bad guys who might be connected to the man in the skull mask, um, it's a nice little touch. Yeah, yeah, sort of. Um, obviously the show's been away for a while it comes back, just brings you right back into it, it's a nice continuation um, and it was a, you know, the scene was blooming well done as well, I thought it was a great scene to open the season back up again Yeah it was, my only thing with that scene was um, the bloke's upside down so he can see up Oliver's face 
he can see he can actually see up the mask. <laughs> and yeah, he still didn't know it was over. It's worrying. I was thinking about that actually sort of obviously he can see up his mask, but I thought in terms of like where you're facing him head on, I thought um the mask provided a little bit of a better disguise. Sort of not obviously not if you're upside down and looking up at him. But um it looked sort of especially in that dark scene, it looked a little bit more you know of a disguise I guess really. But actually I'm now thinking of it, the final scene, I was surprised blood didn't actually work out it was Ollie, but we'll get there as well later. Um, no tangents since the <laughs> new year. No <laughs> tangents for me. Well no, I mean on with the mask, like Lance pointed it out. Mm, so yeah. clearly he can see it. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. so how does he not know it's Oliver? Yeah, because if he can... See the mask, it's, yeah. he's got to be able to see b- below his nose. <laughs> at least. At least to the point of his nose, if not higher. And this is a guy that's dated his daughter. He hasn't liked very much for quite a while. He's started to see more of. Surely he's kind of made that jump. Yes, and the same with Brother Blood. Uh, oh, God. Sebastian Blood. <laughs> Um, how did he not recognise him? I mean, in that first scene, um, fair enough, but in the second scene... Yeah, he's it, staring right at him. I mean, yeah. and it it wasn't like pitch black in there. I mean, and they'd also talked about how, I think, Sebastian... I don't know if it's Sebastian or Ollie, they were talking about them being friends now. So, logically, you'd think they'd been seeing more of each other, too. They, yeah. They, mm. I mean, the only thing I can think of with that is that Slade told him. That, that's a good point, actually. Yeah, um, I'm sure we'll say more about it next week or the week after or whenever we'll come to that. Um, but that's the only conclusion I can come to, that Blood couldn't figure it out. That is true, actually. Don't have an explanation mm-hmm. why Lance didn't. Probably all the alcohol. I don't know. <laughs> that's Laurel. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay. Okay. So we're going to go on and talk about me and Corey's favourite subject about Arrow, which is Laurel. <laughs> um. Yeah. yeah. We're, we're in for great treats over the next few episodes with more Laurel. Oh, we can't wait, can we? Yes. So you could tell from this it was sort of a start to a a few episode storyline uh, involving Laurel, where she was investigating blood, which the amount, the level of paranoia that she has, is just ridiculous. I mean, yeah, sort of, I just don't know what he's done to make her think that. I mean, obviously, we, as an audience, we know he's not exactly um, squeaky clean, but, um, you know... (laughs) Unstatement much. (laughs) (laughs) But for the other characters, I mean, he hasn't really done much to warrant Laurel being so ridiculously paranoid. No, I mean, if we go over his appearances, and this is from memory, in episode... Two, he was campaigning to try and get the hospital sorted out or something like that. Yeah. Um, trying to get that repaired and the city repaired and all that. Episode four, um, he helped with, he had the gun, the cash for guns thing that Oliver mm-hmm. sponsored. Um, what else have we had him? He's obviously campa- campaigning to be mayor. Yeah. Um, and yet Laurel somehow suspects him. How obvious is it? That after Oliver and Tommy, that she is just so paranoid that she is so much more paranoid than her father was. It, well, it's very, very obvious, increasingly obvious, I'm going to guess, with each passing episode. Yeah, I mean, eventually she did sort of find something, Mm. but it's just, what, what actually gave her the idea that he might be doing something? Yeah, I mean, what was her justification that... I don't know, from what I remember, it was just basically her saying there's something different about him or something like that. I mean, well, well done. Someone's a little bit different to what you're used to. Yeah, I mean, it was the um, it was the scene with um, Donna. Mm. Where, it was just, where she was just yeah. sort of like, um, I'm, I'm looking into Sebastian Blood. Um, there's just something off about him. Well, well what? What, what has given you this idea? Because other than the fact that we obviously know that he is a killer and working with Slade and all that, um, he doesn't seem to have done that much wrong. 
No. No, I mean, obviously, he seems a pretty clever guy, so he's not exactly going to go around making a bad name for himself. So just because he's not a playboy, you know, getting it on with most things that move, <laughs> that's what's different about him. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I, t- I don't know. I don't... Um, as much... I, I hope that we do sort of find out why she's doing this, although it's unlikely. Mm. Um, since she has sort of found out that that woman was uh, his mother, not yeah. his aunt, which uh, I didn't see coming, to be no, fair. No, I didn't. <laughs> um, it was sort of a nice little comparison where she was just like, don't trust Sebastian Blood. And as that's happening, Oliver's shaking his hand. Yeah. That was nice. But yeah. I, what I can't then understand is why Laurel's still going with, out with him. Yeah, like, if she's, um, you know, if she's got these feelings about him, surely you just you'd break it off. She won't even refer to him as her boyfriend, so what is she possibly gaining from it? Oh, yeah, I like that scene with Lance. Yeah. That, that was good. Um, but yeah, it, just, it doesn't make any sense. Surely if you've suspected him of something... We don't yet know what or why. Surely you wouldn't do... I mean, if she thinks he's bit part of something very bad, which I don't see how she, when she would have thought of this idea. Mm, yeah. Um, well, why would she align herself with him? Yeah, exactly. That's just a question. I haven't got an answer to that. It's, yeah. No. It's... it's oh. I mean, also, she's stealing her dad's drugs um, from the pain medica- the med- pain medication ones. Yeah. And it's just, what, what is she doing? She's on drugs, drinking alcohol, investigating what is going to inevitably be the next mayor of Starling City. Yeah. And going out with him at the same time. She's just a very confusing character. Yeah, she's spot on, really. She just doesn't really make much sense right now. No, I don't actually think the writers know what to do with her. I, I'd, I'd say that's pretty spot on, actually. This, she sort of just seemed quite... quite. She's sort of gone back on herself a lot. I mean, obviously, she started off the season hunting down Arrow. Um, yeah, for Tommy's death. Yeah, episode three... Was it episode three, The Dollmaker? Yeah, episode yeah. three. Um, you know, she um, had that thing with her dad when she realised she was responsible. And you're thinking, all right, maybe she's going to have a turning point now. She just got worse. Yeah. She just sort of, on her kind of mental state, she sort of dropped a long way, obviously, after Tommy's death. And then sort of, it's it's kind of level. And then she realises six, uh, five months too late, right? That it's her fault that Tommy died. Yeah. And then she's sort of just dropping very quickly and very consistently. Yeah, pretty... Yeah, pretty much that. Hmm. Like I've said before, I think the writers are trying to show us what Lance did when uh, he thought Sarah died. Nobody wants to see that. No, I mean... Well, yeah, nobody wants to see that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I mean, I... I as we've sort of seen, these next few episodes are going to be very Laurel-centric, I think. Mm. Um, yeah. particular, well, if not Laurel, the Lance family. Um, so I do, I am really hoping that we sort of get some more interesting stuff out of her. Yeah, I'd, I mean, she, I thought she was a good character last season. She was interesting. Um, obviously, she was good at what she did, and she's kind of fell to pieces this season. But we, I mean, we know what she can be like, and... I don't know, it'd be interesting if we, well I guess if she was introduced how she was, then we probably just wouldn't care for her that much, but, um, no, hopefully they can get, well I'm sure they will get her back to what she was, but, hope, like you say, hopefully there's some more interesting things, because right now, sort of, I don't know, it just feels a little bit tedious now, her story, I guess, from how it is. Yeah, I'd agree with that, it's, it's... It's complicated, but it's simple at the same time, and that's just not good. Yeah. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. It doesn't work here. Um, yeah, I can. I I hope they improve her, but I don't have much. I don't have very high hopes for it. 
um, sort of, I think we were talking about the promo for um, next week, um, just off air for you viewers. Um, but we, we were saying that uh, she's aligning herself with the Arrow again next week. Um, you know, and that's a little bit of a look back to last season. I mean, that hasn't really happened. Well, it hasn't happened this season. So hopefully that is a step in the right direction for her. I give it a week before she's like, oh no, I need to catch the arrow again. He's doing really bad things. <laughs> yes. Well, we'll see you next week if you're right on that one. Yeah, we'll come talk about that later. Uh, but yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure about Lorella. I want her to be good, but she's just not. Yeah, that's pretty much my sentiments too. Yes. Okay. So we're going to go on and talk about the flashbacks in this episode. Um, they sort of followed kind of as with the start of the episode in the present day, sort of followed on from three ghosts. Uh, what was Shadow getting killed and all that, so... Um, I mean, they buried Shadow, which yeah. was a nice little touch. Um, I think it was next to Yael Faye, and quite possibly Oliver's father as well. Yeah, I think so. Hmm, I, I think that was what it was. And uh, Oliver got the hood, finally. Somehow we, kn- we now know where the hood came from. Yeah. Um... It's definitely the the love thing there. You could see between Oliver and Slade when he was giving him the hood. You could tell that is where this, that's why Slade's going to get annoyed. Yeah, yeah. Um, and he seems to take that anger out on Oliver already. Yeah, I mean, the, the interest. Of, I mean, I don't think he was entirely so sort of in control of what he was doing because didn't they talk about um, Mirakuru messing with his head or something? Yes. It was either the head or the bones. Yeah. Which is why they found the weird people in the um, yeah. in the cave. Yeah, so we've got, got an explanation for that now too. So that's cool. Um, but no, I mean, you can already see they're slowly turning on one another. Um, obviously, he got quite aggressive towards Sarah as well. Um and, yeah, sort of, I'm kind of glad that, I mean, I think we talked about the love triangle thing on the island and if that was going to be the thing that forces Slade over the edge. Um, but I'm kind of glad they've got the Mirakuri messing with his head. Like, it's not just because he lost Shadow, he's going to turn into a Deathstroke. We also talked about um, him wanting to honour Shadow, I think, at one time. And we were just talking about, um, with the way she was, sort of becoming a master killer basically probably wasn't the most ideal way to go about that no and i think obviously the mirror coup is going to have a lot of effect on that as you say um <clears throat> i think it'd be interesting to see how much he can control it because mm. i mean you saw kind of at the start where he was really it was sad and then it went to the bit where he was angry yeah. going to gear up and then trying to kill oliver and then um then at the end where he was sort of, or the third flashback, I should be more precise, um, where he sort of realised what he's just done. Yeah. And then obviously he's disappeared at the end. Um, <clears throat> I, I, I think a lot of this is going to be, over the next few episodes, a lot of it is going to be sort of slightly trying to figure out what he's doing. Yeah. Sort of having this spur of the moment anger and then realising that actually his anger before Oliver could take it and other people could take it where actually now he's just going to kill them yeah. Yeah. without even trying to. He, he is like the arrow version of Lenny. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, to put it that way, except he has intelligence. Um, so yeah. What, what I want to know is at the end there, there was quite a long gap between go find Slade, Oliver telling shit Sarah, Mm. Her kind of looking around for whatever reason, and about a minute later she came back and Slade's gone. My question is, was Slade gone before that, or did she tell him to go? Hmm, that's interesting actually, because she was gone quite a while, and presumably, um, if Oliver's gone to um, tell her to go find him, then you, you know you'd assume he's pretty close by. It's a good point actually. Yes. I mean, because also the Mirakuru was gone. Why would he take the... Why would he take the Mirakuru? Hmm. Unless he was planning already to go to the ship. Yeah, that... that Quite how he would get there, I don't know. 
This is a, a sh- assuming it's sort of gone back out into water, of course. Mm, yeah, I, I honestly hadn't thought of that before there was a Sarah thing. That's interesting. I mean, yeah. Um, no, I, I haven't really got an answer for you there. I mean, it's going to be interesting to see how that one plays out. Um, whether, I mean, I can see it being Slade's own sort of, own sort of plan. Um, because obviously he already said the bit about wanting to cut pieces off Ivo. Um, but if Sarah told him to go, um, it's, that'd be an interesting piece to throw into it. Yeah, I mean, quite frankly, Sarah wants to get Ivo, but she actually wanted to sort of wait him out. But I mean, if they've got the opportunity and she knows that Slade's going to kill them. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> it would work, but it wouldn't, if that makes sense. It would kind of work as the idea... Yeah, she sent Slade, that makes sense, but it wouldn't because she said that they should wait them out. Yeah. So it sort of contrasts everything she said. Yeah, I, I know what you mean with that, yeah. I think the sort of suspicion that Slade had of Sarah was quite interesting. Yeah, yeah, and I think um, for a second, though, uh, when... I, I, I swear for a second, when um, Ivo came on the... I don't know what you call it... I'd, walkie-talkie, I don't know. Um, yeah. I can't think of words sometimes. Anyway. Um, no, but I, when he um, came on there, I thought he was right for a second. But it was interesting to see him make that jump. Because um, obviously he hadn't really questioned her much before then. And logically, you'd assume someone like Slade, who um, the first time Oliver came, he tried to kill him. Um, you know, first time yeah. they met. So obviously in the past, he's not been overly... I can't overly trusting you'd say um, well I mean it does help that when he and Sarah first met he was three quarters of the way dead yeah that that's a good point <laughs> um, that's definitely something that worked in Sarah's favour yeah definitely um, no it's, it's interesting um, I mean I don't think he'd be right with it I do think Sarah is gen- genuinely on their side and she doesn't like Ivo very much, um, and like you say, I wouldn't be surprised if she wants to kill him anyway. Um, but yeah, um, I have to see if he's right on that one. Um, I guess it just reinforces the idea that Slade isn't the most trusting of people. He's been betrayed before, um, and one would assume that's going to be the spark, the overall spark to turn against Oliver, because you'd say he is going to find out that Oliver chose Sarah over Shadow, and um, the whole probably feel betrayed or whatever, angry, blah, blah, blah. And, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, what I found strange, I mean, I could understand Slade not trusting Sarah because of where she's come from. Um, The fact that she survived and Shadow didn't. Yeah, yeah. It's definitely a tell, considering she was working for Ivo for, what, a year? Yeah. And then suddenly... They're both there, held captive. Because Slade, remember, Slade came in about ten seconds after Shadow being killed. Because mm. it was almost the exact, it was the exact same setup. They were standing in the exact same places. Yeah. So Sarah was alive, but Shadow had been killed. So you could see where he gets a suspicion from. Yeah, definitely. But what kind of interested me was how Slade sort of went to Oliver when he was trying to defend Shadow, um, Sarah. Yeah. I just wonder if he doesn't quite... I don't know. Do you think he quite trusts Oliver yet, or...? I think he does. Yeah? Uh, I think... We've said about it. I think it's got to be the miracle messing with his head, because Oliver and Slade, as much as, you know, they've had their sort of differences in their kind of Slade in mm-hmm. the first episode, um, when Sarah was like, don't beat yourself up. Uh, did I just say Sarah said that? <laughs> oh, dear. I'm getting... I'm getting these two mixed up too much. Shadow said about it, and all of us like that. Apparently, that's his job. Mm. So, I mean, other I than the kind of the the friendly banter, mm. there hasn't really been much that sort of since they sort of met and comb- um, sort of started working together back in the Odyssey. Mm. They have sort of trusted each other. Yeah. Um. So, I mean, I, I don't see at this point any reason for Slade not to trust him. Yeah. Um, I'd say it probably is the uh, um, Mirakuri because 
I can't quite remember what Oliver was actually saying to him, but, you know, it probably didn't really warrant being... I think it was just he was trying to stop him going. Yeah, he was just kind of standing between him and Sarah. Yeah, and, um... Uh, well, basically, it didn't really warrant getting picked up a few feet off the ground by your neck, but, you know, that definitely, you'd say, is the Mirakuri from that. Hmm. Just a quick thing. Has, because I'm trying to remember, has Oliver actually told Slade who Sarah is to him yet? Because Shadow knows. Or Shadow knew. Yeah, yeah, she knew. Before Um, she, you know. (laughs) I don't know, actually. Um, I don't know. I'm not sure. I don't think he has. They haven't really interacted all that much from what we've seen I don't think since Slade got blown up um because obviously Slade's been nearly you know on his deathbed I don't think he has actually no I don't think so because I think it was episode 7 mm. when um Slade and Shadow rescued Oliver and Sarah yeah yeah and then sort of at the start of episode 8 Slade sort of needed the rest yeah and Shadow wondered who Sarah was, and that's when Oliver told him, told her. And then they got to the submarine, killed Slade. Yeah. And episodes later, Slade's still alive, and Shadow died, and he's sort of obviously unhappy about that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, you get the idea for the last scene. Um, and then there's this episode. <clears throat> I don't think he does know. No, I, I don't. I don't <laughs> think he's found that out yet. I think if he knew, he would trust... He wouldn't have been like, maybe you're still working for him. Yeah. Because um, obviously the whole sort of background with Oliver. Mm. Um, so, yeah. It's definitely going to be interesting to see how Slade sort of goes on about this. And um, when we see Slade, I think we'll probably see him... Episode 12 is the ne- like, next time I've seen him in the flashbacks, I think, in the promotional images... Yeah. Um, but I don't know if we're going to see him next week or anything like that. No, no, it might be just um, Ollie Present and day. Sarah. Um, mm. Yeah, it's, it's it's definitely going to be interesting to see how Slade goes about everything now. Yeah. And yeah. to see how sort of Oliver and Sarah deal with it. Because I think um, the way he's gone about things in the past, um, he's um, obviously with what was it uh the odyssey i think it was where they um uh, he took out everyone he sort yep. of, he's not really been rash i'd say he's sort of been quite calculating with everything yeah he's methodical yeah but violent yeah but it's going to be interesting with the mirakuri because obviously just going straight to ivo when he's got all those men even if he is basically superhuman now it's still you know it is quite rash and it's just made out of aggression rather than thinking it through. So it's going to be interesting to see if he loses that or not. Um, cause obviously, in terms of the present day, I think we can see he probably is a little bit more... Well, he is more methodical because he talked us through his entire plan for Oliver in um, Three Ghosts. But, um, yeah, mm. it's, it's going to be interesting to see how it all develops. So basically, we know that he gets the Miracle under control yeah. in five years. <laughs> In five years. Yeah. So it's still, it's still what, three and a half years of Ireland? Yeah, so you'd say probably things aren't going to go to plan all that time. Hmm. Yes, I think Oliver's in a bit of trouble. And so I know, to be fair. Okay, so we're going to go on and talk about Roy. Um, obviously he had the Miracle injected into him. Um, and he started to show his super strength. I mean, we sort of saw, like, his healing powers... In three goes, where his leg healed up. Mm. Um, yeah, we uh, properly saw his powers in this one. What yeah. do you think? Um, no, I thought it was good. I thought they handled it pretty well. Um, and you can sort of sense he doesn't really know what's going on still. Um, and I thought it was nice, um, as opposed to Slade on the island with the Mercury being quite aggressive, obviously... Roy already looks like if he's trying to use it for good because obviously he saved um, Moira from getting hit by 
I don't know what you call it, a big post. Yeah, I don't. I still can't quite figure out why that fell. No, I, I can't. I think it's, um, I don't actually know why, but I suppose it was a chance to show Roy's newfound strength. Um, and yeah, obviously we've got the healing powers too. Um, in t- in terms of the episode, um, I thought they handled it pretty well. A sort of whereas you could have had him sort of reveling in it straight away once he realizes. Um, well, maybe he didn't realize straight about this strength thing, but anyway. Um, I thought there sort of was a sort of a bit of fear behind it, and I just thought it was executed really well. And also, fear sort of picked up on the healing thing, and it's going to be interesting to see if she finds out what he's been up to and um, how she'll handle that too. Yeah, I think it was a good thing that they could sort of. From what I've read next week, I mean, what comes out later, but I think next week he's supposed to be testing it with um, Sin. I think that's the thing with the brick that you saw. Yeah. Um, I think it was in Three Ghosts podcast you mentioned that um, in the promo. So, I mean, but I think it was really good that they sort of showed people like Moira, like Thea, seeing <clears throat> him do this before he even knows what he's doing or what he's capable of. Yeah. So it sort of just has that little layer of suspicion from not only Thea and Moira, but to himself. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I think I'd agree with that. I think he summed up really well. Mm. I mean, I think Thea's obviously going to find out that there's obviously something more to him than just the adrenaline. Yeah. Which was... he He's obviously been taking classes from Oliver and Felicity in, ta- in making up excuses. Yeah. Clearly. <laughs> Yes. Um, but yeah, she's going to figure some, out something's up. Definitely. Yep, definitely. I'm not quite sure about Moira. No. Whether she's going to figure something out or is she just sort of not paying any attention? I, I'm not sure. I don't know. Um, depends what she's seen. I mean, obviously she's sort of... I don't know. I guess it's a case of if it happens again, perhaps. Maybe. But, uh, yes. With there, has she noticed the fact that his leg's healed? Yeah, that's true. I mean, obviously, well, we saw it in this episode, they are um, trying to say this in the classiest way possible. Um, <laughs> they have their more hormonal moments. I'll say it that way. Um, so <laughs> one would assume she might have seen his leg at some point, but um, I don't know. Uh, that'd be interesting to see if she has seen it. I mean, it's been five weeks, but obviously it'd leave a scar. Getting an arrow through your leg, you'd assume. So. Well, I wasn't going to mention that. I was just going to say the fact that he was still lying in the bed with the leg, and then sort of if Thea kind of looks like, how is your leg? Can I see it? just to see how it's going, and it's just not there, or he's walking properly. Yeah, that would have been a less awkward way to go about it, actually. Um, yeah, I, I don't know, I mean, um, I guess we're just, you would have thought she did have noticed something. I mean, you know, he's going to be walking normally, and I think um, he was, obviously he had a limp in Three Ghosts when he was um, going into uh the hospital records or whatever to um, find Sin's friend. Um, yeah, I guess that's one of those things we'll have to find out in episodes to come. I mean, obviously they're going to tackle it, and you'd uh, assume that Fee is going to learn more of it. Hmm. Yeah. It's a wait and see one, I guess. Yeah, it is. Um, how do you think... I mean, we've talked about Slade sort of going crazy. Um <laughs> With his powers. What do you think about Roy? I think the difference perhaps between Roy and Slade is um, Roy's younger probably. um, And he probably hasn't got such a big um, axe to grind I guess. Because obviously Slade simply wants to destroy Ivo for what he's done. And Roy doesn't really have that motive I don't think. And also... Oliver's seen it before, he understands it more, he knows what he can do, so he's going to be watching over him. I think he's got Fia too, who is, um, obviously, you know, she looks out for him. And I can sort of see him just being more grounded by people around him, and 
I don't think Oli would let it get to a stage where he's anything like Slade. But um, it'll be interesting to see how that plays out, and even if Slade even picks up on it himself and tries to use it, you know, use it to his advantage. Hmm. Well, I mean, that's a good theory, yeah. I mean, my thing was that, I know it probably doesn't make much difference, but he wasn't injected with as much as Slade. Yeah, that's true. I mean, that could have a factor in it. But the other thing could be that also, instead of his mind getting deformed, it could be the uh, the bones. That's true, actually, because I think one of the versions of Roy in the comics... Um, I mean, it, obviously it's not from Mercury he does it, but I think I think it's Arsenal, but I'm not sure. Arrow fans out there correct me, obviously. Um, but one of you know the um, psychics doesn't have an arm, if I remember. I think he lost his arm or something. So you know that could be brought into it. That's a little bit different than misshapen bones. Well, <laughs> it, it, yeah, yeah, just just slightly. <laughs> Yeah, you know. Um, I think, actually, to be fair, with Roy, I think the Arsenal route's probably what they're going for. Um, I've seen quite a few people say that. Um, but yeah, I think it's going to be interesting to see how he sort of handles his powers, what he does with them. I think we assume that he's going to use them for good to help Oliver. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think the question is, can he control them? Yeah. That, that is a very good point. I mean, um, obviously Slade, who you'd assume probably, you know, he's more... It's, I don't know, actually. I was going to say Slade's probably mentally stronger to a degree than perhaps Roy is. Um, and, you know, he struggled. But, you know, on the flip side, Roy probably hasn't had the betrayal Slade has and suddenly lost someone so close to him. So that could have dealt with his mental state um because logically you'd sort of say you know you've got to be pretty tough mentally to stop it taking over you um i do think he will be able to control it um but part of me thinks there may be a little trouble along the way to that i could sort of see um almost i don't know i think we talked about fear and deaths and stuff Part of me wonders if maybe Roy might accidentally hurt her or something at some point. You know, not meaning to, but just because he can't control his strength. From, I mean, you know, it's just making theories and stuff. Mm. I mean, I don't think that's really that likely. I mean, like you were saying, that um, she helps him kind of get through things. Yeah. Um, I think that's definitely something that helps with how Roy's going to get through this. Whereas with Slade, he's just sort of surrounded by Oliver, who he sort of he's, he supposedly trusts Sarah, who he has no idea who, he, who she is, um, and the person he loved just got killed. Yeah, I suppose that was what I was sort of trying to get at earlier. Like Roy's got more people around him looking out for him, and you'd almost say Slade, you know, Oliver and Sarah, they perhaps fear him a little bit now, but sort of Slade's been the one looking out for them to an extent and Oliver's been obviously more reckless on the island he doesn't know who Sarah is um, sort of you know he's the figure of authority there to a degree and perhaps he hasn't really got anybody keeping him as grounded as perhaps Roy might be mm. Mm, yeah I'd, have, uh, I'd agree with that I think it'll be interesting to see how sort of Roy deals with it so it might take a while but, uh, that's alright. Okay, so we're going to talk about uh, Oliver and Felicity in this episode. Um, it was kind of a main storyline, to be cons- if you consider it that way. Um, there's a lot of tension between them. Um, and there was a nice little bit towards the end that made us think that they were going to uh, have a nice little kiss there. Yeah, uh, I, I'm, I was on that way of thinking as well. Um... What do you what do you think of this whole kind of situation? Um, I think it's interesting to see how it's sort of um, panning out. I mean, I'm I'm not sure it's at the point. Well, actually, I'm just um, this is a problem when I think um, other things come into my head because um, I was <laughs> go- I was going to say firstly that um, 
obviously we know in the past Felicity he's had a bit of a crush on Oliver and I was going to talk about it's perhaps not reciprocated but it's perhaps more he needs her in a professional sense but I was then thinking back to the end of Keep Your Enemies Closer um, when he's saying it's better, it's better that he's not with someone he um, you know he could really care about um, no I think it's interesting I think um, I think it's interesting to see how that thing's developed. And I think in terms of Felicity, I th- I'm sure we were talking about it in the um, mid-season review podcast about how at first you sort of just comedy, you know, one-liners and stuff. I thought this episode, she really developed and, you know, she didn't really have many one-liners. She was sort of obviously pretty miffed at Oliver for going off at her. And that tension was interesting. Um I definitely could see something happening there. It's just a question of when and how well they can do it. But I think it'd work. Um, and it's, I'm not, sh- you know, I'm not really fussed if I see it either way. But I think it's more the consequences of it that sort of could be quite interesting. Um, you know, if obviously if it was to go wrong, we'd firstly keep working for him. You know, all that. But um, he's definitely coming to a stage where he needs a more um, he, obviously we know he definitely cares about her um, yeah I just thought it was interesting and it sort of it felt like a development to their relationship um, that they've had they sort of haven't really been at odds like that properly I wouldn't say um, and it, it was a sort of a development and then obviously in it, I guess to a degree it sort of brought them closer to the at the end of it Obviously, Felicity's got Barry, but even he in, um, was it Free Ghosts, I think? He was saying he sort of picked up on the fact that Felicity seems to like Oliver. Um, yeah, I've basically just come up with a load of questions there and no real answers, so I'll let you take over. <laughs> yeah, no, I'd agree with that. I mean, I think I'm not really bothered if it happens. I mean, I... Uh... I say that I prefer it not to happen because it would just make things strange in the air cave. But it'd be mm. depending on how they wrote it. As long as they didn't write it like a Laurel thing, yeah, um, that's awful. Um, as long as they didn't write it like that weird and sort of has no end game as such and has no where doesn't even know where it is at the moment, um, it would work. But as I say, if it didn't work, there'd be a serious problem. Yeah, because I think that, um, you know, Arrow team of uh, Diggle, Felicity, they've come along quite nicely, and if you add that into the mix, clearly it's going to change it. Um, you know, if they screw it up writing-wise, then in terms of the rest of the season and, you know, well, rest of the series and those three, it it could have quite a few consequences to it. And um, almost, I think I'm at the stage of thinking where like you, I'm I'm not too fussed about seeing it, and almost I'm more worried about how it could affect things in the long run, because um, they've got it quite, you know, it's working quite well at the minute, and um, almost it'd be a disturbance to that, and it could sort, um, I, I guess it could just go over one of two ways, and you sort of fear it could go the bad way, I guess. Yeah, I mean that's always the risk. Um, and then there are a lot of fans that are just sort of like, we want to see Oliver and Felicity get together. And they wouldn't care if the storyline went awful. No. <laughs> um, you know. Um, but I mean, yeah. I think the problem with it is, is that everything's sort of developing so quickly that it wouldn't actually kind of, you wouldn't think it would get sustained that long. Yeah, I get what you mean. I mean, there's all. I mean, also the sort of the whole thing was Laurel, um, Sarah as well, um, even the Huntress, mm. who we haven't seen for quite a while. Yeah. Um, there's all these people, McKenna as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, these are there are all these people that could potentially, they've either been in Oliver's life or they could potentially still be in Oliver's life, and sort of, you never know, really. Yeah, I I, I do know what you mean there, totally. Um, and obviously Felicity, Felicity's got Barry. Yeah. It makes me wonder how much she's going to be with him once he wakes up. 
with the power to, you know, outrun everyone in the world. Yeah. Um, so, I think, see, the thing, the problem is, like, if it doesn't work, you get the kind of situation, like, with Diggle here, having to sort of break the two up yeah. between arguing. And it sort of worked in this episode a little bit. Not, not, it didn't, like, work completely, but it worked to a point. Mm. But if you had it every week, yeah, nah. it's a, no, I, yeah, no, <laughs> yes, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, oh. I'm hoping that they sort of don't go. <laughs> I'm changing my mind so much here. I don't really want them to go down that route, but as long as they sort of work it right, it wouldn't bother me that much. No, I know. I totally know what you mean with that. I think, in all honesty, I think the probably. I mean, obviously, I'm not an arrow writer, and um, they tend to surprise us here and there. But sort of, if I'm thinking about it, the best way to work it and not um, sort of damage the arrow team would be almost to have Felicity as his end game. I mean, I know they said Laurel, but um, you know. If they were to do Oliver and Felicity, I think the only way to do it sort of quite effectively and not um, mess up the Arrow Cave would be to have her as his end game, you know, final girlfriend, however you want to phrase it. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, like, like you say, if it's done well, fair enough. If it's not, then it could be pretty damaging, so... Yeah, I mean, I think, I'm sure the writers have got, have got a good idea of what they want from the relationship between the two of them. Um, but yeah, like you say, it needs to be done well. Yeah, yeah, there's no, I think it's a case of there's no use of doing it for the sake of it. If it what if they've got an overall plan of what it's going to add to the story and how it's going to impact them and all that, then by all means do it because when they do those sort of storylines I think they tend to really work and you, you know we were talking about Laurel a bit ago um, and saying we're not really sure sure if the writers quite know where she's going with that and if they did that with Oliver and Felicity it wouldn't work but for example Tommy's death at the end of season one they chose to do that because of the impact it'd have on everyone um, so if you're going to do Oliver and Felicity Make sure you know how it's going to impact, if that's going to be useful and effective and build a better story. You know, you've got to consider that, otherwise there's no use doing it. And, you know, it probably wouldn't work then, so. Yeah, yeah, I'd agree with that. Um, yeah, I don't think there's much really else to talk about all over Blissey, other than only do it if it seems right. Yeah, that's, that's pretty much our message, I guess, from um, yeah, I, just the last little bit. I did like sort of like the kind of remarks between the two of them. They're sort of insulting each other. That was quite funny. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, was a, it was a nice little thing because obviously, obviously, there, yeah, blimey, I'm repeating my words now. Um, <laughs> my, uh, this is why I'm not a public speaker. Um, <laughs> yes, no Sebastian Blow on this podcast. No, no, definitely not. Um, no, but. Like I was saying, um, Felicity's confidence has grown and she feels she can do that, and no, they just went well, so. Yes. Okay, so we're going to go on and talk about some odds and ends of the episode. Um, The first thing I picked up on was previously. Mm. It was very odd what they featured. Yeah. Sorry, I was, nod- I was just nodding my head and nodding along. So. Yeah. It, it seemed strange that they sort of featured, like, um, obviously the shadow thing was a big thing, but it seemed strange they featured, like, um, where the, Oliver killed um, Cyrus Gold. Mm. But it didn't feature him reviving Roy. It didn't feature Slade. It didn't feature... What else was there? That can be connected to this one. Um, I don't know, really. It just seemed weird. I, I, was, I was sort of watching it. I thought, 
I'm not quite sure what's going to happen in this episode because the previously sort of usually kind of suggests what um, might happen, like with um, Broken Dolls when they featured in the previously. Having not seen her in episode two, they featured the uh, the mysterious masked woman from ep- the scene from episode one. Oh yeah. And then, ju- then just straight away you think, oh yeah, it's obviously going to be her that saves Oliver. Yeah, I know what you mean. Um, in the previous, it, when you sort of see the previously, usually you kind of get a hint of the storylines that's going to pick up, and you didn't really have that this week. No, very strange. Uh, what else have I got here? Oh, yeah, the um, the with you dropping fewer bodies, Starling City should probably build a bigger jail. Quote <laughs> was quite good. I think there were quite a few good quotes actually. Just gonna look through. Um, oh yeah, Moira saying about Oliver's hobby. Oh yeah, that was a good one. And, uh, Lance comparing the aunt to a Snickers bar. Yeah, oh, that was one of my personal favourites, actually. Yes. Yeah. There were some good ones. Um, the special effects were quite good. Yeah. Um, with the bomb in the air. Yeah, the car stuff at the beginning was pretty good too. <laughs> yeah, with the um, practical, obviously. Um, the um, where Oliver was sliding along the floor. Yeah. And his bike, that was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, I like the the, the Sebastian blood backstory. Yeah, I think that surprised me definitely. The twist at the end, um, didn't see that coming. No. I mean, I think it's nice that, as we've been saying, we've about the villains that we need to kind of have this little thing about them, because otherwise they're just villains. They're just mm. evil people who have no real moral or reason for anything to do anything. Yeah, yeah. And having this little bit about blood was nice. Yeah, because I think that was one of the things I was wondering about. Um, why is it he wants to do what he's doing to Silent City? Um, I just didn't really get it at first, but apparently he's killed his father. Um and I'm guessing we're going to find out more as to why, or perhaps he's just a bit of a nut job, but one of the two. Yeah, I mean, I think Lawrence made the wrong comparison. Maybe he uh, should have said blood about the stickers bar. Yeah. <laughs> would it would have made more sense. On reflection, yeah. Yes. Um, I don't think there's much else, really. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think we've talked about most of it, to be honest. Yeah, I think we've um, pretty much got it all. Yes. So looking ahead to next week, I haven't really been organised at all. I haven't even got the press release up. <laughs> it's typical. Um, yeah, it looks, um, as you've been saying off air, it looks quite interesting. Yeah, I mean, if you watch the promo, you probably have to watch it about 10 or 20 times to get everything out of it. I mean, so much to pick up on. Um, looks like we've got Deathstroke in the present day. Um We've got Slade in the present day, obviously, and I've pretty much already answered that with the death stroke in the present day. Anyway, <laughs> moving on. Uh, looks like it's more Laurel again. Let our joy be unconfined. Um, <laughs> uh, yes. Oliver and... Well, not Oliver. Well, Oliver as the Arrow and Laurel linking up again. Um, more of her quest to see what's up with blood. Um, also a bit which has been bothering us um, we're not sure if Blood has a sword to his neck or if it's someone else but is that a little bit of a feud between him and Deathstroke does he even know if Slade's Deathstroke who knows yeah you definitely put us some interesting questions here uh, I'm just going to read the press release Arrow teams up with Laurel to find the man in the mask Oliver is conflicted after Laurel reaches out to the Arrow asking him to investigate Sebastian Blood uh, our, Oliver is unsure whether to believe our accusations against the man he has publicly supported for mayor, but decides to trust Laurel. Really? <laughs> and it, doesn't Oliver already know she's kind of going off the rails, and she already yes. tried to take him down, so... This was like a, um... The Diggle thing last year, wasn't it? With, um... Uh, what's his name? Deadshot. Yeah. Back in episode 20, when it was always like, it's always Laurel, isn't it? You're always going to choose her. Yeah. Even over someone that he's just sort of... I don't know. It's all very weird. Anyway, continuing on. However, when the pair gets too close to the truth, Sebastian exploded, exposes Laurel's drug addiction and has her arrested. 
nice way to treat your girlfriend. Mm. Yes, it is. I don't think, I don't think her, um, don't think she's gonna be his not boyfriend for very much longer. Yep, I'd, I'd agree with that. <laughs> Yeah. Meanwhile, Roy reveals his new super strength, the Sin, who wants to test out his abilities. Uh, yeah, so I think that's probably going to be with that um, little brick thing smashing that you saw um, in a promo. Interesting he's doing it with Sin instead of Fear. Yeah, but Sin knows about his thing with the arrow with uh, yeah, the true. True. canary, yeah. Sarah. Um, so, makes more sense. Unfortunately, Roy isn't able to contain his rage once unleashed and almost kills a man. So yeah, this is definitely going to be the struggle of how he can... Yeah, control it. Mm. Back on the island, Oliver is surprised when Sarah reveals a secret about Laurel. I wonder what that's going to be. I honestly have no idea with that, but if it's a Laurel-centric, maybe... I don't know, maybe that could be something to do with the present day. Because we've talked in the past of how flashbacks like to connect to things. Um... Yeah. Hmm. Honestly, can't think of what that could be though, off the top of my head. No, neither can I. Be certainly, it's certainly going to be an interesting episode. Yeah, I mean, I'm really looking forward to it. Looks like we've got a hell of a lot to talk about next week. Yes, and I think we, I don't know, if you, I can't remember if you uh, mentioned this a few minutes ago in the program. It definitely looks like Oliver's fighting blood at the very least. Oh no, no, I didn't mention that. That's uh, another good point. And uh, potentially it could be Destro, we're not quite sure. I mean, get to episode 12 and have a fight like that, that's not where I'm going. Uh, 11. I can't <laughs> count, this is why I didn't take maths at A level. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> um, yes, so uh, it's certainly going to be an interesting episode, we might have a lot to talk about. Indeed. Yes. So I hope you've all enjoyed this podcast, and we will see you next time. <laughs>